The Houston Chronicle article on the DCCC's Lujan uh, show one of the dangers that will stop a blue wave. And if you doubt that, take a look at the CNN poll today. And that proves that, the, that it is that generic poll is now three points within the margin of error, which means it could be that the Republicans are ahead right now. Think about that. Anyhow, the DCCC and the Democratic establishment is creating a dangerous war by proxy in the Democratic primaries that will come back and bite it if it does not stop it now. They need to get the hell out of the primaries and allow Democrats and independents to support the candidates they want in November, attempting to micromanage in a manner that shows a vendetta against a faction in the party is not the way. It is not the way to go. The DCCC is attempting to sabotage two reliably progressive candidates. Actually, it's many more, but it's just that these are the two that so far are pairing on politics done right. I spoke to Laura Mosier on the show yesterday. Today, I have Levi Tillman from Colorado. Congressman Steny Hoyer tried to bully him out of the race. There is still time to stop the shenanigans by short-sighted Democrats, but I fear that many Democrats in both major factions of the Democratic Party are willing to put their personal grudges ahead of the constituents who need them most. Real leaders must emerge. Real leaders must emerge. And you know what? Based on everything that I've been reading thus far and following, it seems like one of our uh, real leaders have emerged. Senor Levi Tillman, how are you doing today, sir? Egberto, thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here. I am excited as well. First, uh, let's let's bring our um, let's bring our audience up to date with exactly what happened, uh, what made the, the intercept, and then went viral. Both the video, the audio that you got together, but all over major networks, it finally came out what Stanny, Stanny Hoyer did to you? Well, I, the thing that really took the headlines is that when I sat down with Stanny Hoyer, who's the number two Democrat in the House and a prolific fundraiser on K Street and with corporate PACs, he then takes that money and he funnels it towards the candidates who are more centrist and aligned with his conservative Democratic ideology. He reached out to me and asked to sit down uh, for a meeting in December when he was coming out to Colorado for a fundraiser for my opponent. And I decided that we had been um, we, we had been pushed around enough by establishment Democrats. We'd have enough had enough establishment Democrats who did one thing behind closed doors and then went out and did something else towards the general public that we wanted to make sure that whatever happened in that meeting wasn't a he said, she said. So I recorded that meeting. I gave that recording to the Intercept, and they released a, a version of that recording to the general public that showed Steny Hoyer leaning on me to get out of the race. Now, that's the headline, but I think the more important thing and the thing that has sometimes fallen through the cracks in coverage of the story is that their involvement in this race started very, very early. And what they're trying to do is stack the deck by shoveling shoveling huge amounts of money towards Democrats who align with their ideology and creating facts on the ground um, so that progressives can't win races because they're up against a, a giant mountain of money. You know, that is really sad. I mean, they, they, they are doing the same thing here in Houston. I mean, if you take a look at what's going on, you, 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 see, one, you see the progressive campaigning like hell. And when I say campaigning like hell, I mean that person is touching people, touching doors, etc. And you don't see that on the other side. And what I, what I have already figured out is that there's a big undercurrent of, uh, of, uh, of push, push carts and, and, and phone banks and so forth for a select few of these candidates, as you mentioned there, that aren't of the progressive uh, persona, if you will. And, that is, and, with, and what they're really trying to do is change the type of Democrats that most Americans really want by using underhanded tactics. And you, you have to say about that? Yeah, there, there are two really important things on that note. The first thing is that Democrats have an extraordinary opportunity for a slam dunk in 2018. But the DCCC is blowing it because they're dividing the party. They're being very divisive. They're undermining people with a certain set of beliefs and policy priorities. 
And what that means is that, first of all, the issues that local voters, local progressive voters in my district care about don't get discussed. Medicare for all, free community college for middle class Americans, getting to 100 percent renewable energy. Um, the second thing, though, is that they realize that their their actions this election cycle are going to shape the U.S. Congress for decades going forward. The power of incumbency is such that once most of these centrists get into office, they're likely to be there for a long time. And so by jumping on the scales during the primaries, they can ensure that we will have a more conservative Democratic Party and a more conservative Congress for decades to come. That is so true. I want I want to read a little segment from the um, Houston Chronicle that actually details why it is that that uh, the D Triple D C claim that they were jumping into the race here in um, in in Houston, and this says it all. Here's what what Luhan said: It was never about ideology, which you know is a lie. It was never about ideology, said Luhan, a Democratic congressman from New Mexico. I am a progressive. I have a lot of strong progressive positions as well, and I stand on my record with, with, with few substantive policy issues dividing the two Democrats, meaning uh, Lizzie and uh, Laura, uh, with few substantive policy issues dividing the two Democrats, the May 22nd runoff has come, become a clash of competing track records. Fletcher, as a Houston lawyer long associated with Planned Parenthood, Mosier, as an activist writing writer hailing from the bernie sanders wing of the democratic party that is that is the that is the dirty little secret that a lot of these uh these re democratic operatives are running on all those folks that were running on the progressive policies policies that poll very very well by gallup and just about every other polling institution most americans want these policies they are they our own democratic party are insisting and fighting against and ensuring that the people that they support don't necessarily support them wholeheartedly. Is that what you've been noticing in Colorado as well? Absolutely. And there's a lot of window dressing from non-progressive Democrats. Um, they have co-opted that word progressive. They declare themselves to be progressive. And this is an attempt to neutralize people who are actually fighting for popular progressive policies within a Democratic Party. The second thing that Congressman Lujan has said that really ignores the power and, and the, the perverse role of big money in politics is that ultimately the voters will decide. But the voters decide based on the communications they receive. They decide based on their interactions with a campaign. And if one campaign has the ability to communicate amply with the voters, if they have the ability to run TV ads and radio ads and produce uh, internet advertisement, then the voters are more likely to pick that candidate that is backed by the big money. And, and that's why big money is such a big problem in our election. We are, we are struggling right now to afford the direct mail program that we would like to pursue with our voters, um, while our opponent has raised $1.4 million backed by the DCCC. And that's a huge challenge. Well, let me let me just tell you one thing that um, that I am doing uh, with Politics Done Right and other uh, real progressive rags are doing, and that is we intend. In fact, it is our duty to give all of you, all of you progressives who are running there with the Democratic Party's shoes on your neck, we are going to give you exposure. We are going to attempt and do our utter best to make sure people know who you are and where they need to funnel their nickels and dimes to help you not only with money, but with uh, social media, not only with social media, but with their own emails and with their own word of mouth. The idea is this. A lot of people are not giving you guys the coverage that you deserve, the coverage that you need, the coverage that Americans need to hear so that they know that they have a choice. Well, there are quite a few of us out here who intend to make a difference in, in, in ensuring that that doesn't happen. Levi, so what I'd like to ask you is, why don't you tell those listeners, the people that are listening to us right now, what's your platform? What are your policies? What do you, what do you want to do for both the citizens of Colorado in the 6th District as well as the nation as a whole? 
Well, some of the major policies that I'm running on are a $15 an hour minimum wage um, in our economy, especially here in Colorado. That's kind of the bare minimum that you can raise a family on. Um, I'm running on a platform of Medicare for all. All Americans need health care. This isn't something that you can pick and choose whether and when you are going to consume it. And so um, we consider that kind of basic to the American dream. We are running on a, a platform that promotes a full transition to renewable energy by 2035, which is it's hard to do. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be a challenge, but it's a challenge that's worth it, not only because it's the right thing to do by our children and by our environment, but also because they're going to be a huge number of well-paid jobs associated with that transition. And then finally, I'm pushing for an impeachment of Donald Trump. Um, Trump is a dangerous man. Uh, I am deeply concerned about the corrosive impact he's having on our institutions. And as Democrats and as citizens and as Americans, we need to stand up to him and we need to stand on our values and we need to impeach him. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get a conviction in the Senate, but we need to take that first step and we need to stop running away from our responsibility as Americans. You're absolutely right. It is a sad, sad fact that we have such a corrupt president and not only Republicans, but even some Democrats are scared to even use the word impeach or scared to point out that this guy is a clear and present danger to America, not only on the local front, not only on the domestic front, but on the international front. Luckily, the Europeans have, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but the Europeans have come out with a message stating that uh, Trump does not have the authority to unilater unilaterally withdraw from the Iranian deal, which probably means that even if the United States want to go ahead and apply sanctions, that they, the Europeans, will not do so and, in fact, will probably prop up the regime. They've already asked the regime to go ahead and abide by the treaty because there is still uh, buy-in from all of the European countries that uh, and Ru Russia, imagine Russia, that signed the treaty. But Levi, before we let you go, I understand that you have another interview that you need to do with um, Telemundo or Univision, one of those two channels. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I really appreciate you taking this time. But tell tell our audience what do you think, or not what do you think, what do you know? Grassroots Democrats, grassroots activists need to do for not only you but all of the current progressive candidates that the uh, Democratic, or rather the Democratic establishment is trying to either quiet, is trying to get out of these races, is trying to really um, put roadblocks ahead of them. Well, what we need is for patriotic progressive Americans to join us in our fight for truth and a better future. That means that we need three things. We need both. We need contributions, and we need feet on the ground. We need volunteers. My website is www.levi4, that's F-O-R, Colorado.com, and anyone interested in getting involved in our campaign can contact us through the website. Um, but I'm also urging people to go out and fight for the progressive candidates that are in your, in your area because they are outspent, they are outgunned, there is a huge institutional architecture that is aligned against them but we can win on the power of our convictions and the power of our ideas and on people power and so um, line up behind your local progressives and help us bring a new generation of policy and values to washington well thank you so kindly uh, levi before you go i want to wish you well i want to tell you that you are an inspiration to all progressives out here that you did. You actually got on tape what many should have long time ago, and I think it is important that more folks do that. Anybody interfacing with the DCCC, the DSCC, or the party, uh, do not allow yourselves to be bullied. It's a democracy. We, we still have a democracy yet. It is a democracy. Let's act like it. Let's defend it, and let's make sure. Remember, most Americans want progressive policies. This is not something that Levi is saying. This is not something that Laura Mosier is saying. This is not something that, I mean, even Republicans poll on the positive side of progressive 
issues, progressive policies. Don't be fooled by the rhetoric. The only people who don't want progressive policies are neoliberals, and they can be found in both the Republican and Democratic Party alike. Am I correct, uh, Levi? I, I think that these policies are broadly popular, and that the, the problem is there is this conservatism in Washington. Um, when we have sometimes been criticized for the move I made, to record that conversation and to release it, uh, the, tr the criticisms really come in two veins. The first is, well, I'm not surprised by that. That happens all the time. And, and that is basically saying that this kind of corruption is part of the system and it's the way it's always been and you shouldn't do anything to stand up and fight against it. And the second is people saying, well, you know, you shouldn't have recorded that conversation. It was a private conversation. Um, I'll just say it was completely legal, and we felt that the bigger principle that was at stake was the defense of our democracy and the defense of our free and fair elections, and that vastly outweighed any personal trust that may have been broken between myself and Congressman Hoyer. You did the right thing. It was a pleasure having you on the show, uh, Levi. Thank you so kindly for uh, talking to us. And you keep up the fight. Uh, have your staff put some information under the show, and we will make sure that we get it out there. Thanks for your time, Egberto. Great chat. You have a wonderful day, my friend.